perfect. The nominees for the 2020 Play of the Year are Bin's Pentakill at the League of Legends World Finals. Well, will find a target. Scout of the week will not just yet. Here comes Bin. And Star One on the full retreat. SOFM hops over the wall, finds himself a route to Tanagri. That means he cannot interrupt anyone else. He's being chipped the away. Start. Melted. He's down. He's dead. That's it. Canyon's finished as well. SOFM hops forward. Ghost flashes defensively and rooted in place. Bin sends him. Penta, Penta, Penta. Ghost gets caught out. That's the Quadra looking for it. Bin will pick it up. Get the Penta kill for Bin and Suning Gaming in the World Championship Final. EQO's Genji Clutch at the Overwatch League Summer Showdown. Everyone is weak. EQO with the blade pulls it through, builds it up. Will it be enough? One kill, two kill. Are you kidding me? EQO now finds it with the what? third. And now it is overtime. XE moving over to the Tracer to try and deny, but EQO, EQO, what, what a player, what a star. Jackie Love in Knights 2v4 at the LPL Spring Finals. Oh, misses from Jackie Love. The pillar Ooh, comes through. Nice. Spike comes in, lines it up, and kills Zoom. Jackie Love with Severum. Has a bit of healing. Konami slowed by the package again every single time. I cast this champion. He pops off. Rampy's impact grenade clutch at the six invitational finals. Rampy down below. Will he be able to stop this in time? He has an impact oh! grenade. There it is. Ground control to Major Tom. We've got ourselves a series. Simple's 1v4 clutch at IEM Katowice. Simple. He needs a multi kill. First found. Twist aggressing. They have to double peek. He's getting his shot. He's hitting another one. Simple. No. Simple. That's unbelievable. What in his name? Number one in the game. He's done it again. Zywu's pistol ace at the IEM Beijing Grand Finals. Zaiwu, no health really, but he's still hitting shots. He's already got three and four and five. And th oh my god, Zaiwu! And the winner is Rampy's Impact Grenade Clutch. It's a 3v1. Somebody from Nip will need to play it. It's Pino's job to do that. Rampy down below. Will he be able to stop this in time? He has an impact oh! grenade. There it is! Ground control to Major Tom. We've got ourselves a series. Match point. For Space Station! Oh man, I've watched those a million times because you know we've had committee meetings where we decide who gets nominated, and it's still awesome. Our first play of the year I want to talk about just about broke the simulation, and that was Jackie Love and Knight 2v4. Yeah, yeah. So um, okay. I need to preface this clip with something really important, right? I guess you already saw it, so I'm not prefacing it. I'm going to tell you something about this clip that's important before I tell you why it's so cool. Obviously, when this happened, Aphelios was absolutely broken. And to continue being the shill, if you want to know about, more about why and how and when Aphelios was broken, please watch our YouTube video about it, but do it after you finish watching the stream. Point is, Aphelios was busted, but a lot of his power was contained in his ultimate. And if you go back and watch that clip, the ult totally whips, right? Jackie Love completely misses. So what happens after that is what makes this play so incredible. Because Knight swoops in with Corky, basically splits the fight into two individual 1v2s, and from there, they just play it perfectly. It is actually like incredible precision play from, I mean, Jackie Love and Knight, right? Timing everything just, just perfectly to survive and win that fight. Like that should not have happened that way. And it is truly incredible that they pulled off what they did there. Dimitri, I'm gonna ask you about the simple 1v4 because I feel like you could talk about simple all night, every day, if you had to. Yeah, I mean, I'm a real Navi stan. I could, I could talk about Simple all day, every day. I almost do. Do you talk about Simple in your sleep? <laughs> I, I think, I think it's happened. I think I've had mutterings about, about just like in my sleep, just like one in his name, number one in the game. What in his uh, name, number yeah. one in the game. Yeah, I wake up, I wake up. My, my girlfriend looks at me. She's like, "Who's Sasha the Smasha?" <laughs> I've said it before. I'll say it again. Playing Counter Strike against Simple is just a bad idea. I think that this showing was not just in my mind the best of probably any player in any esport in any single tournament this year, but it was definitely one of the craziest MVP performances of his career. What you are seeing here is peak simple. And honestly, it's about one of 20 from this tournament.
Now, peak simple is all well and good, but how about peak Zaiwu? Because this play was actually a, I would call it last minute entry into this award show because it happened kind of after we decided our initial nominations, but we had to get it in there because it was so good. And it's against Navi. And who's on Navi? Well, Simple, the guy that Dimitri was just talking up, and Electronic, two of the best CSGO players in the world. It's just not fair. He kills Simple, and then three Navi players peek him at the same time, and they kind of die at the same time, to be honest with you. Now, moving on, we talked about Huan Feng and how, how good he is uh, in our last award entry, but he's not the only incredible rookie on that team. Bin was blowing my mind the with his in. Fiora Pentakill. Yeah, yeah. So uh, obviously, I got to start by saying, how could we not put the first Pentakill in the history of World's Finals on our list? Hell yeah. And this one is actually something special when it comes to pent Pentakills because Bin didn't do this with some champion that's main thing is team fighting. Someone who's, you know, got awesome crowd control, has, you know, some AOE ultimate that can splash damage onto the entire enemy team and take over a team fight. He did this on Fiora. Fiora's, the crux of Fiora's kit is split pushing. And Bin was able to get a pentakill on this champion that most people don't even have business team fighting with. I'm gonna be the jerk here and like temper it just a little bit because obviously play with sick, it's on our list for a reason. But like a lot of pentakills in the league, the last couple of kills were kind of given to him by his team, but certainly the first three kills are, are truly incredible. Okay, Dan. Okay, okay, Dan. Yeah, I could do I could no, not good. You know well, what, Daniel <laughs> Daniel Rosen, you you speak truth, but yeah. you're not gonna kill the hype train because the next play that I want to talk about, or rather, I'd like actually Josh to talk about it, is this EQO play. And like Josh, I am going to be dead honest with you, right? I can only follow so many esports closely. This year, Overwatch for me personally was not one. When I saw this play, my jaw was on the floor. You don't need to be an Overwatch stand to know how incredible this was. One of the things about it that's pretty hype is he has the game sense to not do what some of us might refer to as a cloud nine, where you <laughs> leave the payload and you lose the game because it's in overtime. So there's actually a, a section of it uh, where he has Dragon Blade up, he dashes away and kills someone and dashes, he comes back to the payload basically. He runs forward and then dashes back. When you look at this, you kind of like, it makes you realize that Genji is still one of those heroes that like, if you could have like perfect knowledge of the game, like if you could see and and just perceive everything around you at all times, you'd just be like unkillable sometimes. Like you would just, it would be impossible to murder you. The only thing about it that kind of sucks is it didn't end up paying off ultimately for, for his team. Yeah. Now look, Josh, it was hype, as you say, it didn't end up in a W, but our winner did. And Dimitri, I got a feeling that a lot of people in chat are going to need you to break down why Rampy's Impact Grenade Clutch beat out all of these incredible plays we just watched. And I'm happy to explain why, because trust me, it did. Zero seconds on the clock, right? 1v3, the scoreline is 5-5. Five, five. So if Rampy runs in and loses any one of the three gunfights, he's gonna have to win, right? It's championship point for Nip. So instead, he drops down the open hatch and with the help of his teammates Ping, runs underneath through bar, impact grenades the ceiling, shoots the planter and stops the diffuser from going down, ensuring that SSG secure this indescribably crucial defender point. Now. It's really important to understand that SSG were getting shit canned on this map. <laughs> and this was their best map. This was the map that they were guaranteed to win and they were getting utterly destroyed. So when they ran it back, this Rampy play really, really solidified, really solidified that the comeback was real. This was the moment when the stadium just went electric and everyone felt like, oh shit, SSG are actually doing it. They're actually running this one back. And I would also add that in a year where, unfortunately, we didn't get very many thunderous lands, thunderous crowds, this play 
really stands out all the more. Yeah, you can't underestimate that land factor, honestly. And Dimitri, you you know, you painted a picture of the crowd going electric, and it looks like a few people in our Twitch chat were actually there. So I'm sure they can speak to how I was there that too, was. and I can tell you, it was goosebumps. Now I have a treat for you. Well, for everybody actually, and it's not just for you, Dimitri. Oh, for Dimitri. Um, Dimitri, the old for me. Dimitri. Just for me. Yeah. We actually did get a chance to connect with Rampy and talk to him about, you know, being awarded the play of the year and what it meant to him. And uh, we actually ha got him to watch the play back and reflect on it. So let's go ahead and take a look what the man himself had to say. I, I just really appreciate, you know, being voted for play of the year. You know, uh, I've never expected um, to get something like this before in my career. You know, when I first got into pro league, I was very... Uh, inexperienced and I um, I think I, my first season I went negative 18 and to see the progress and I mean I will say I, I couldn't have done any of this without my teammates and my coaching staff um, they better they make me better every day uh, they work with me non-stop whenever I'm in a slump they work harder with me because I want to work harder and I just constant work and without my team I couldn't be here so I really honestly I thank them as well for you know pushing me to be my best every day and making me better and giving me criticism and all that fun stuff and you know it's just it's crazy to be where I'm at right now and be with my team and uh, just uh, I'm excited for what the future holds it kind of looks weird because it kind of looks like I was like hiding in construction so my job was when they were executing, we wanted to make sure that nobody was gonna hop in construction windows. So that was my job is to stop them from coming in construction. So after we stopped that one and then everybody died, I I mean, it just makes sense to, to me. So it's kind of what was my thought process was. I was like, well, if I go here, I die. If I go in office, I die, don't win the round. So the only thing that makes sense is to go down below. There's no way they're gonna expect me to go down below and drop the hatch. And that's, that was my thought process, just the safest route. He has an impact oh! grenade, there it is! control to major tom we've got ourselves a series what about after it happened i mean your your tournament life is on the line like this it really like it's not just a clutch in the sense of a round i mean it's a clutch in the sense of you lose if you don't win that clutch i mean obviously you can see i was screaming um because so like for my team my my job is pretty much i'm the hype man i'm the guy who's screaming keeping the energy alive and everything and um when that when something like that happens it's kind of it's like a whole like morale boost for everybody because they those guys were destroying us on every single map 10 they start i think they went up 4 on that map so me and nade having our clutches like that got us like over the hump do you think the fact that this happened on land like this was like the biggest event for siege this year by accident because it actually happened do you think that elevates the play that makes it all that much more memorable all that much better um for it being like kind of like the last biggest land before covid kind of just destroyed everything uh yeah i would say so i mean it's i feel like in general like a lot of people watch the six invitation i don't know if it was like this one in particular was the most watched. i feel like every invitational is pretty like popular to watch like everybody wants to watch that I, and um definitely doing it like a clutch like that in like the grand finals definitely is uh it's watched a lot like for sure like every, a lot of people will see it Thanks for watching. If you want more content like this, hit the sub button and ring that notification bell. For unique bite-sized videos you won't find anywhere else, hit up our Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook pages.